I'm glazing this wooden sash. I have it set up on my glazing easel so that I'm not bending over working flat on a bench. This helps save my back from hurting. And the easel leans back on a slight angle. It's just so the sash tends to stay in place. I've got my putty. I've kneaded it up so it's nice and warm and soft and pliable. And putty knife. First step is to just work some putty into the shoulder of the glazing rabbit. That goes like this. I've got the wad of putty in my hand and then I just use my fingers to feed it up to my thumb and forefinger and just wipe that in place. The putty's nice and soft and I can just wipe it right in with my thumb like that. It doesn't have to be smooth because the glass is going to lay flat on top of it and flatten it out. It doesn't have to look neat. This is the bedding putty. I just push it in with my thumb or my finger. Or the putty knife. Doesn't take a lot. Just want to bed of putty before I put the glass in. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. I've laid the bedding putty here and here and then I'll just rotate the sash on the easel and lay in the bedding putty here and here. I do that because I like working from this angle and it's easy to work down here, but if I end up having to putty upside down like this and with my other hand here and here, it's more difficult and slows me down a bit. So we call this speed glazing where you just do the easy angles and then rotate the sash. Next I'll seat the glass. I've got the original glass that came out of this sash and I've cleaned it with the wet wash method. I'll just set it in the lower glazing rabbit. and lean it in place. And I'm not going to push it in place, but I want it to move in that direction. So what I'm going to do is just wiggle it a little bit. You can see I'm just barely setting my fingers at the edge of the glass and wiggling it. And that helps the putty underneath the edge of the glass flow with that movement. If I pushed it real hard or pushed it in the middle a lot, it might break the glass. So 
So just a little wiggling and it goes right down. Here's the other pain. Same method, just a little wiggle. So as I wiggle that glass, you might just be able to see here, when you're doing it, you can look right down through the glass and see the putty flowing across as the glass flattens it out. And when you see that it's flown all the way over to the sight line, the edge or heiress of the glazing dado shoulder, then you've wiggled it enough. You want to seat it down so that the bedding putty is about a sixteenth of an inch thick on average. That might vary if the shoulder of the glazing dado is uneven or the glass has a bow or a shape to it. Actually, I'm moving the glass in plane with the glass so that it uh, won't break it. Okay, now the glass is set. The next step is setting the points. Lay the point flat on the glass with its pointy end going into the neck of the glazing rabbit and then take your putty knife and set the end edge of your putty knife across the glazing point and wiggle it into place. Wiggle it sideways like this. And it will go right into the wood. Usually sash are made out of soft wood, which is softer. This sash is made out of chestnut, which is a little harder, but it goes right in if you wiggle it. Don't try to just push it straight in. You have to wiggle it sideways to get it to go in, back and forth. I'm using Fletcher's Glazer's Points, number seven. That's a good common size, readily available And it has a point that drives into the wood and two tabs that are bent up at a right angle. To set the point, lay it flat on the glass. And take the end edge of your putty knife right up against the two, short, two tabs. And then push it into the wood. But don't just push it straight in. Wiggle your putty knife from side to side and it'll seat right in until both tabs are right up against the neck of the glazing rabbit. Setting points by hand works well, but when I have a lot of glazing to do, I use a point driver. This is the Fletcher number no. 5 point driver. It holds a magazine of diamond shaped points right here, and when you squeeze the handle, it shoots them out 
here. That goes like this. I set points about every 10 inches all the way around each pane of glass. If the panes are less than 10 inches, then I put one point in each side. This one right here. Okay, that's the points that'll hold the glass in while the putty cures and sets. And then at the end of the life of the glazing, decades from now, when the glazing putty is weathered away, these points may be the only thing holding the glass in place. The next step is the outer line of putty. And I'll use the place, pack, and tool three-step method. So first I'll just place the putty in the glazing rabbit. Doesn't make any difference how it looks, just quickly distribute it. And then for each line of putty, I come back and pack it. A little more is needed right there. I wiggle the putty knife sideways a little bit and that helps the putty loosen up and flow down into the joint at the edge of the glass and it helps it seat solidly and continuously against the surface of the glass and the neck of the glazing dado. Same along here. Just distribute the putty. Place it. And then come back and pack it. When I'm packing, I can also make adjustments on how much is in there. If it seems a little shy, I can add a little more. And if there's a bit too much, I can take it away. There's a little on the back of my knife here. Okay, now I've placed and packed all around the whole sash. And now I'll rotate it again. Because I want to come back to where I first placed and packed it. While I was placing and packing the rest of the sash, this was able to sit here and marry the glass and the glazing dado. Some people have trouble with their putty knife pulling the putty out of the glazing rabbit while they're tooling. That's uh, caused by two different things. One is if you don't leave the putty after you've packed it setting for five or eight minutes, it doesn't marry the glass and stick to it. So if you place the putty and then tool it right away, it might peel out. Also, 
You might have a putty knife that looks like this. You can see the surface where the tooling is done is dull. And it's full of little scratches and nicks and pits from where it was rusty once and so on. Well, all of that drags on the putty and tends to pull it out. If your putty knife looks like this, smooth and shiny, even reflective, if you can't see your reflection and recognize your own face in your putty knife, it's not smooth and clean enough. You could try polishing it off with uh, real fine steel wool or go out and buy yourself a brand new one. These hallway putty knives have a nice uh, hardwood handle and are set with brass rivets and the blades come highly polished. That's what you need to solve that pulling out problem. So, final tooling. One slow stroke. Not enough putty there. Just add a little. One method of tooling is to hold a putty knife like this. And you rotate the putty knife on its axis to get the correct angle for the bevel of putty. And then hold the end edge of the putty knife against the arras of the glazing rabbit and the point of the putty knife against the glass and just draw it down. very common way to do it. And then you have to come back and pick out the putty that's remaining on the glass. I'll just tool that again. To show you another way to pick that putty out. Take your wad of putty and just form a ridge like that. And then take that ridge and wipe along that putty that's remaining on the edge of the glass and it will pick it right off the glass. 
very slick and quick. You have to do it right after you do the tooling or if the putty lays there for two or three minutes even, it'll marry the glass and it won't wipe off as easy. With the common method of tooling, the putty knife is held parallel to the line of putty and stroked like that. But with the end edge method, the putty knife is held perpendicular to the line of putty. with the end edge on the glass. You can rock it back and forth till you feel it settle on the glass. And that end edge almost always stays in the glass, except for when you're ending the line of putty. I'll show you that in a minute. So keep that end edge on the glass always. And then the side edge that's trailing as you move the knife, the side edge stays on the arras, the little ridge of wood between the neck of the glazing dado and the face of the mutton. That end edge stays on that. And then you raise and lower the handle to adjust for the angle of your bevel of putty. And you look through the glass to see where the glass meets the arras or the ridge of the shoulder of the glazing dado. Now there might be some putty that's squeezed out on the back side of the glass. So you can reach around behind and just scrape that off in a little section as you get started. So end edge on, side edge against the arras, seek the angle so the trailing point of your putty knife is right across the glass from that ridge of wood on the other side. And the leading side edge is up off of the arras, about an eighth or a quarter of an inch. So end edge, side edge on the arras, find the angle. I like to hold the putty knife right here just lightly with a couple of fingers just to hold it steady and with a light pressure. And then I just start my downward stroke. Keeping the angle. See what's happening here? No scraps of putty on the glass because the end edge is always scooping them back underneath as you stroke. And then the putty flows back up behind the putty knife and curls out over the top edge of the putty knife. So it does, it's not leaving any putty on the face of the mutton here. So I'll just continue this stroke. Now, down here as I approach the next line of putty, I have to lift the point, the leading point of the putty knife off of the glass. But I'm going to keep the same angle of the putty knife and just lift that point so that it clears the arras down here. So I'm going to lift that and continue my stroke. And the trailing point will come right to the place where this edge of the putty will meet the edge of the putty here, but of course the edge of the putty isn't formed here yet. So I have to imagine where that's going to be. And then I rotate 
the putty knife just slightly as I continue the stroke and then I wipe the putty knife out to the corner where the two arises meet and that forms the miter between the bevels and that's the end of the stroke. Now you can see here's the extra putty that's not on the glass, a real time saver. And then to start the next stroke, I pick up any putty that's left here and just wipe it down and then pick up the miter between the bevels right here with the trailing edge of the putty knife. I set the trailing point on the glass and pick up the miter of the bevels with the trailing edge and then swivel the putty knife around till the end edge is always on the glass the side trailing edge of the putty knife is on the arras and then I start the next stroke Now, watch as I come to the next line of putty. I'm going to keep the trailing point of the putty knife on the glass and I'm going to lift the leading point and swivel the knife slightly. So lifting that point so it clears the arras here. And then bring this point in. I'll clear away the putty with my pencil here so you can see it bring this point of the putty knife in, keeping it on the glass and then swivel the putty knife keep the trailing edge of the putty knife on the arras and the end edge on the arras up here and then lift that trailing point off the glass and just wipe it right out and that forms the bevel, I'm sorry, the miter between the two bevels. So clearing off the little putty that's left there, bring it back over here, and then this next line of putty is ready to tool. So that's the exterior line of glazing complete. Now I'll flip the sash over because I have to tool down the bedding putty that's squeezed out between the glass and the wood frame. So that's pretty easy to do. I just tool it down with a couple of strokes and then I trim out the extra and then tool it again and that makes a perfect seal between the glass and the wood tool it in scrape out the extra and then tool it down Tool it in, scrape off the extra, and then tool it down. Now right in here, not quite enough squeezed out, so I'm, and there's a little void, so I'm just going to fill a little in there. Tool it in, trim off the extra, tool it down. All right. And then right after 
you've done tooling within seconds after finishing tooling take some whiting which is dry a dry powder it's ground up chalk calcium carbonate called whiting w h i t i n g in a container with about a four or five inch house painting brush and just load that brush with some of the dry whiting powder. And then you polish all of your finger smudges of oil off of the glass. And I think you can probably see how the whiting is sticking to the glass and that's every place where there's a little bit of oil. So you just use the dry brush with whiting to polish that off and it cleans it. The dried powder picks up the oil off of the glass. When you come to the glazing, your fresh line of glazing, hold the brush on an angle when you come to it like this and brush right up next to it and if you have a nice soft brush it won't disturb the glazing hardly at all. You'll see whiting building up on the lower line of putty. Just brush it off when, as you polish the glass next to that line. Some of the whiting sticks to the putty and that's all right. It'll help the putty start to skin over quicker. It's better to have the angle of the brush on the same angle as the putty rather than bring the ends of the bristles into a line of putty that can disturb the putty a little bit. So I'm going to bring it to this line of putty this way. It's important to do this right after you finish tooling the putty. If you let it sit there for even three or four minutes that oil from your fingers and the little bit of putty that was laying on the glass, that oil will start to marry the glass and it won't clean off as easy. Got probably too much on that one. Now see I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this all cleaned off really good on this because I spent a little time shooting the video for you and uh, it actually sat here on the glass a little too long for maybe three or just three or five minutes instead of just uh, 30 seconds or one minute. It's mostly coming off. Usually it doesn't quite take quite this much to get it off. brush it all off, make sure there's none extra, especially on the lower line of putty where it might have settled. And as you brush, some of it just goes out into the air, some of it's falling down.
Do your final strokes on an angle, 45 degree angle. Then if it happens to leave any streaks, they won't show so much. Now with this polishing with whiting, this glass won't need to be washed after the sash is painted. It can be installed and uh, actually shouldn't be washed until six or nine months after the final painting. Remember to uh, polish the other side, the inside, because that had some uh, glazing putty on it as well. Usually I can glaze the sash like this in about 15 minutes, maybe 20. Now the sash is ready to be set aside to give the putty a chance to skin over and then it can be painted.